the episode on the tree of life. This episode is, I'm unpacking kind of each Sephiroth, working with the, this is the tree of life. I'm on to Bina. Last week, I released a big video on Bina. Today, this week, we're going to do a little more with Bina, but a little more at the highest levels of understanding. Follow me, you understand, it's not hard. Different information is being imparted at different levels. And this is about the deepest, the soul level understanding, all right? Now, let me just say, we discussed the male and the female, Chokma and Bina, wisdom and understanding, the principal thing, our text is written, encrypted, using these words, symbols, again, colors, planets, Names of Elohim, there are so many different um, numbers, letters, there are so many different, you know, the root words that make up the name of Elohim, different ways to express information. But working with Bina, but if, when you're working with Bina, you really are introduced to the feminine principle. You can't get around it. It's as old as Adam. <laughs> it's as ancient as Moshe, he knew this. This is in our Torah. It's in the Hebrew language, which is male, you know, has male and female uh, endings and genders and concepts in it. So it all works together. Nobody's done um, on all the different levels. It's planned deliberately. Parabolic language is picked deliberately to impart the same archetype over and over and over again. Now, the left and the right, the male and the female, kind of represents, again, when you look at this tree, there's the middle pillar. There is the right side, which is known as the loving kindness of Elohim, his right side. And another name for um, Hesed right side, is Gedula, which also means greatness. And those are kind of tight. So, so sometimes you'll see those words, Hesed and Gedula. At first I was a little confused. Gedula is a little older. It means the greatness of Elohim. But the flip, and then on the flip side, Gevira. But up here in Bina, on the left side, we are talking about really nature. All right. Elohim is a word that ex expresses the imminence of God. Now, I've talked to this in some other videos because it's important to understand there's the imminence where Elohim fills everything, but he's very, he's outside of his creation. He's bigger than his creation. He can't, in some ways, he is hidden and mysterious. But at the same time, there you can make a strong case, it's, and because it's true, two sides of the same point. Elohim is with us. She, and this is our heavenly mother, and this one gets the Shekinah, is with us always. All right, and this element of the left side being nature is also meaning that it is in manifestation. You can see, uh, you know, sometimes you could feel. Elohim's tenderness or his goodness or his mercy, his joy. And those are real feelings. They're in the world of Yetzirah. You're actually experiencing a real um, Sephirothic vibration. And there are many different ones on many different levels. So in one sense, you know, we have to say these are really true energies. They're not just intellectual mind games, all right? But the fundamental principle of the whole left and right, male and female, let us make man, uh, and that's the Godhead, let us make man in our image, male and female, image and likeness, uh, but actually as a unity, that they will come together. The only way to get, you know, be fruitful and multiply, the only way to get that multiplication is to pair. It's the fundamental principle. That's how it all is combination. And this is the, the biggest ethical, uh, this starts off the biggest ethical discussion for our age today. Do we have the right, as just humans, Adamites, not God, and not one of his deputies, to sort of, you know, do we have the right to mix codes, to mix, you know, in one way, this way, they get to mix species, mixed multiples, mixed genes, mixtures. Do we have a right to do that? Or everything was made after its kind and everything is good. 
and only Yahweh can really put them together perfectly harmoniously. All right. See, these are really deep intellectual, theological and ethical questions. But so you can never answer that correct unless you have the correct archetype, the correct foundation. He made them male and female. You can't. If you don't buy into that one, well, then forget it. You're not going to find truth through the Elohim door, you know, through uh, the Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Okay. Now, as nature, she, our divine mother, is in charge. And, and this is why there's so many levels. Let me say again, house. The word bet means house, vessel, container. Bet is the word associated with Bina. This is because... The whole principle, like I said, Elohim, it's a verb, or God. See, a lot of times, it's ha Hashem. Let's just take that. I have to use it because it's kind of outside this whole discussion. Hashem is the giver. He is a verb, okay? And he's not even a he, the spirit. What is giving. Always giving, giving, giving. Yeah, is a giver. giver. The earth, his first, uh, in order to get something manifested, <laughs> you know, out of all of his giving and all of his ideas and creative energy, he has to uh, make, sustain, combine, bring to the raw material. And this would be the, because she's the house. So you can have an idea for a house in your mind, all the blueprint and everything you need. You got to go out and get all the resources and that stuff. But when you come to build the house, that's why it says wisdom builds the house. She contains the blueprint. Everything that's going to get made is only made through her. That's why she's called the mother of all living. She births. She is pregnant. When she gets that life and that code, that, that stone, that seed, I mean, uh, from Keter Holtman, from the male into her womb, uh, it, it, it's just the most amazing creation download the world has ever seen or will ever see it's all there but anyways i digress all right it is also does not rep now it also represents now the way they code these things and this is why i said there's so much physics of the spiritual worlds and a lot of people are putting this together today um it symbolizes death renewal rebirth rebirth and the perpetual cycles of this see they, they the rabbis they code these things this is one of the things in the four states. This is why understanding the four worlds, the four levels of soul life, um, these the names of the relationships that are already established in this chart uh, are for all time. But uh, there's four states of, that matter can be. It can be hot, cold, wet, or dry. See, and they, they know this, and then they relate this in their language to air, fire, water, and earth, earth being a solid, you know, solid, liquid, you know, plasma, and wind is another uh, kind of comparing words. But the point is, they're all talking about the same thing. And they're talking about, see, on the left side, nature, they say she's cold, and be, but nature is in stuck in this perpetual cycle of renewal. This is the thing. We have the four seasons. You can't get around it. The fact that things cycle through seasons, that nature goes through life, death, and rebirth. Humans go through life, death, and rebirth. No matter uh, that, this is a fundamental process that, that's duplicated over and over and over on all different levels. So it's an archetype that is true and observable and provable. Now, the rub comes into the point with what happened in the ancient world, which is happening today, which has always been a problem, is worshiping the creator, the, not really the creator, worshiping the creation and making it sort of the creator, too. This is a pagan. Now, pagans worship literally lower, and I said this about Elohim, and I'm going to say this again because this is very important to get nothing else. In Hebrew theology, when Bina, when the divine feminine is referred to uh, as Elohim in the Godhead, so theologically, you, this is why you got to know where you are, and not about fallen angels, not about other rulers, meaning other angelic rulers, or fall or earthly rulers, okay? Those are other ways the word is legitimately used. 
But when you're speaking of the Godhead, you are speaking about Bina. Okay? When this reference, the context, everything is telling us that we're talking about yod heh vav Hey, Yeah. Yahweh Elohim. Okay? Now, the other thing is we are not to, we're not to love or worship or serve or be the, the creation. Okay? This is the point. But, um, and by analogy, so the same thing, like we're not to worship our body. And these, you can see these arguments playing out in a lot of like, dialogue um platonist or greek philosophy and uh the the hebrews are different strains because they have different takes on these large issues but we don't they don't we don't worship the body um and yeshua even said because and even yeshua who is of the mashiach is actually his seed his persona his soul his incarnation comes from the highest level of soul life could tear but that's another whole <laughs> that's down the road okay he uh he himself said the father is greater than i all right so this concept of hierarchy is also always built in that's why you have a you know you, you have the king and the queen and then you've got the court and you've got the princes and the princesses is they all have different roles and relationships and again these are very true parallels parabolic way of saying things that are true so but but again you got to keep your eye on the ball which is the spiritual application i get tripped up in some of the so we are to um we don't worship bow down um any of the sun the moon and the stars the deputies of running the cosmos or some of the lesser orders angelic orders all right this is something that if people understood about Kabbalah and the rabbis, they're really not dealing with those lower natured beings initially. I mean, the tree of life, the first thing, get wisdom, get understanding. Get an understanding of the tree of life. Then we'll start to fill it in, you know, all the branches and, the, and figure out who's who and what's everybody doing, okay? <laughs> but um, now, even in Judaism, this is why you're not to worship the parts of the Godhead again, but you're always to um, acknowledge. Yahweh Elohim as the high God. It's a paired duality, hope and being. Now, to flip that around into, you know, where people, because it's true, there is a cosmo, there are laws at work here. That there, this is a, com, a concept of combining opposing energies in, in a perfect balance, in a perfect peace, in a perfect way that will produce something that is very good. All right? So, this is important and, and it is done so that's what the left and the right is and that's what science is telling us and i'm going to go there in a minute to some of the models for the cosmology that are being put out there again which i believe are ancient remember i always said a rose is still a rose doesn't matter how you repackage it it's still a rose and if we can get back to that to understand okay what are the roses what is it then we can um, kind of get out of the um, the jungle there, but the masculine and the feminine, the masculine, again, known as if, if Elohim is the mother of all living, Eve, because she's the first prototype in Adam, and Adam Cademan, which I had as one of the first large archetypes you have to understand. I've done some shows on this. I forgot, just let me write that. Adam Cademan, which does have to be separated from the sixth day Adam, um, which is sort of our progenitor, generator, okay? So the cosmos is the heavens. The right side is the heavens. The left side is the earth. And I told you, this is, if you turn this, this is acute. This becomes, well, I'm going to show you there's a progression. It goes from a point to a circle to a cube. So they call it the cube of space. I've alluded to this in some other videos. I've touched on it already. And I will come back to it more and more. But that cube of space is the, what is known as, again, nature in a lot of ways. The whole there on pin, everything from here down that was created. And has a, a form of physicality, and maybe not like we have down here, all right? But it has um, finally form to it so make it in our image in our likeness it has a likeness it has you know this is the whole concept of 
something in archetype, and then it's shadow. Everything has a shadow. Everything all the way down. Boom, boom, boom. Again, I just want to quickly go through a few of my list pages here, just to make sure I'm clear on these. So that in the in the male and the female, the duality of the two sides, Hokma is light, Bina is darkness, and if darkness is not bad, it's not evil, it's quite beautiful. All right, darkness is, is has um, <clears throat> A be- it's everything that Yahweh made is good and is beautiful. And, and that's what the middle pillar is, makes it beautiful in its time. All right. All right. So we have the middle point, which is Hokma. And really, we're talking about a st- all, the, 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 all the knowledge, the complete download of Ensof into Keter, into Hokma. And Hokma then pours all of that into Bina, which is, and her components, her essences come into being in manifestation all right if she creates all of these lower worlds like i said six sons and a daughter paralleling leah that's all in the last uh video now this the, again middle pillar nature is the left pillar and right pillar the upper water and the lower water see this thing can be tilted on its axis this way uh or the other way it, and i think this thing really well I'm not sure. I think it almost kind of, I won't say flies through space, but I definitely think it changes direction, I guess you could say. But that's another hole. I'm not going there either. Okay. This is, one side is Yahweh's loving kindness versus his judgment. He is a God of love. This is where Christians get the concept that God is love. Yes, because on the right side, the male side, Ketir, Hokma, this side comes, this is known as, Hesed is known as the loving God, the God of loving kindness, the mercies, the tenderness. The, that is a true statement, all right? Whereas Gavira on the other side, on the feminine side, the, 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 the side of chastening, is why it's called judgment. It's like if you're a parent and you do something wrong, you have to have the resources, the power, the authority, uh, the wherewithal to correct what's under your authority, your children, all right? Bina has the authority to correct her children, all right? And this is an important concept when we fall into, when he prunes us, when he chastens us, all right? That is known as coming from the left side. And that, a lot of times, that is part of what's going on when they were talking about the harshness of Elohim, all right? They're not over here. There is a harshness to... Um, the left side, but again, way beyond the ken of this, you have the sun and the moon. The right side is equated with the sun. The moon is the left side is the feminine. Um, you have day and night. In the beginning, how it goes, day and night. The Ruach was over the water. So this is some things people don't pay attention to these individual words. The Ruach was over the waters. Okay, versus the darkness that was over the abyss. Now, I can't go into that here, but that pairing is very specific and is literally saying, being a, the Heavenly Mother, this side is also known, this going up and down like this, um, the abyss, the sea, she is darkness. So, and, and she is darkness. She, and, and darkness is fire. And it's not... Fire in darkness, it is. <laughs> Again, we'll get into this, how they come up with this. How do they make these equations and say they're so true, but they are. So, But we'll come back to that. But again, all I want to say is when you see words paired, that you try, we have to try to get to the essence of which, what word is this. Pairing darkness over abyss is very purposeful. Putting Ruach over heavens is also very purposeful because one is talking about the right side, the other is talking about the left side. Okay. Now, again, this is a, something that's not always picked up is the womb and the earth are words also, again, like Mother Earth, and she is the womb, you know, of all living. That that is important to um to have as an understanding and the earth, this is what's called, it says, Hear, O Israel, 
the Lord, your Elohim, the Lord, the Lord Elohim is one. Okay, I mean, it is a unity. We're not going to go around here. We're not talking about um, polytheism. This is this is a little he heniotheistic henotheism. But even there, I don't think if you're coming at it from a Greek understanding, you don't really have the fullest picture of what's going on. All right. And let me say this, it's even in the numbers, and this is something that I don't do too much on the numbers, but it's so real. Uh, I had one, two, or let's just do the numbers, one, two, three, seven. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, one, it'd be one, two, three, seven, ten, or twelve, some of the biggest pairings of numbers, right? But one is Keter, which is really the original point. Um, and then Hokma and Bina always work as a pair. And they're always, two represents, again, division, separation, two opposing energies, all right, that are purposely done that way, separated. And then they can be brought together in different combinations, quite seriously. Uh, so you two to three, to uh, the next, to a triad of three, that three actually makes the next, large mental number of four, the four worlds, the four corners, you know, the four archangels, what is there? Uh, two, uh, two Yesod and Malkuth, the two how, and then the energy is collected and is funneled, the gate. So you got to go through gates, to the gate of righteousness. Yesod is known as the righteous one. And we'll get to that, okay? So Malkuth, so if you're going to ever ascend either literally in the sense of um, nullifying your body and allowing your consciousness to be in the upper palaces, upper rooms, okay, so to speak. You know, they were in the upper room. That's not just meaning they were in a second story building. These people had high wisdom and understanding to even be where they were. They were right there, right underneath the prophetic um outplaying, outpouring of Yahweh's plan for right then. A lot of people, we miss it. Most people just like shh, miss the, the designated, the auspicious times of Elohim, right? So, okay. So there is also the, um, the rain. This is another way. Uh, the rain falls from heaven, okay? But the dew, which also waters the earth, dew is, comes up from the ground. So there is moisture, because again, it's all one. Malkut has moisture on a lower level. See, this is there's dew from heaven, there's water from heaven, but it's it can come from a faraway source. The imminence. I always get it. I have to think about it for a minute. Okay, the transcendence of Elohim or the imminence. The, a dew when you wake up in the morning and, and all the dew it, the dew covers the land it's blanketed it's very close to that land all right it's very intimate it's covering over all of its surface this is a whole important kind of mind picture that is displaying information to us all right so now let me say this okay because again in order to Put the writings and what it really is the, the 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 hidden or allegorical understanding is going to help us understand in the biggest picture what's going on, what's always been going on, sort of an under some under the veil that's been out of our radar, uh, and where we are, where we're going, and kind of how to get there. <laughs> how does this transition to the millennium? happen and on one level it really is and this is the elect a question of elevating your understanding your consciousness your worldview your your understanding of Yahweh Elohim in the whole creation transcendently and imminently all right that and then you can have many different levels of understanding and work with this, you know, like I said, your nefesh soul down here. You, this is called our yetzara soul level. This is very much our 
our emotional state, our, uh, our, our, our likes and dislikes, personality, or, um, you know, things that, like, why should somebody have, like, okay, why should I have an arch gene, so to speak, right? I don't have any math gene, that's why I stay away a little bit from that. But why are these things so? Well, there's an explanation for these. And these things reside in the, the soul the level, the lower soul, the Ruach level. And you get up to Neshima, this area here with Tifrit, Gavira, and Hesed, and this triad, this three, which is our Neshima, which is our highest spiritual soul. And it really is where all the good <laughs> that is potentially inherent in mankind, you know, does come from. If we can get enough people functioning from that level. And that's what Torah will do. This is the promise of Torah, and I believe this. And I've seen it in my own life, that um, everything calms down. You begin to get peace. You begin to get insight. You begin to get wisdom. You begin to get a, like a lot of calmness about things, you know, how they play out. Uh, when you get up to this level, it's much more eternal, much more unchanging. Uh, and then, you know, outside of it all, up to our Heavenly Mother and Heavenly Father, which will be, we will be totally reunited at the point of the resurrection, the millennial change, the standing up, whatever we're going to say up.